Hello everybody, welcome into my Maker Machination series for your daily dose of death traps. My name is Waldosis, and today I'll be showing you five quick and cheap traps that you can use to kill some custodians raiding your base in Behaviour's newest game, Meet Your Maker. As well as some quick tips for second phases that a lot of people don't seem to be realising. Just a quick PSA before we start, however, this is my very first YouTube video. So if you like what you see, then please like, share, subscribe, all that jazz for more future Meet Your Maker and other gaming content. I also stream over on twitch.tv slash Waldosis as part of Underrealm Gaming, which is a gaming group doing more funny variety content. There's quite a big group of us and we just have a general laugh. So if you like dark humour or British comedy, then that's the place to be. And if you like the look of the base that you can see on screen right now, it will be available on social rating at the end of this week for anybody who does want to give it a go. But for now, without further ado, let's take a look at some traps. Okay, so we're going to start off with one of my absolute favourite traps, and it catches people out so often that it's become my go-to in pretty much all of my outposts. It costs one hollow cube, one corrosive cube, and one impaler for a total cost of 55 capacity, but it's surprisingly effective for such a cheap combination. So to build this, what you want to do is you want to start by creating a two cube deep drop at the desired location. So in this case here, I'm just building it around the outsides of this base, and then I'm going to put in a corrosive cube underneath. Oops, I'll just use hollow cubes instead. Let me just switch to corrosive cubes. Here we go. Pop the corrosive cubes underneath it, and I've got a little defensive point. And you can put walls around that if you want to add some more defenses. So you can put them around here just to stop people from being able to get in to the base by repelling and ziplining through a corrosive cube, because you can zipline through a single cube. You then get your hollow cube and place it directly above that particular corrosive cube. You then need to add an impaler so that you can get into it, but you don't want to put the impaler in the edges of the trap like you would normally see in these kind of traps. Instead, what you want to do is add it to the ceiling above it by just placing a wall above it like this, and then selecting the impaler and placing it on the bottom of that roof. And this is a lot more effective than having the impaler in the drop, because when people go towards it, as they step over it, they'll step into the cube and fall, but the actual impaler triggers as they step over the cube, meaning that they jump up back into the impaler when they try and get out of the hole that they fell into. It makes it really effective, and I've had a lot of success with it. So this one feels very dirty, and it's a bit of a noob trap, but I absolutely love it. It's been a great return on investment so far. It costs 110 and the capacity to do it in full or 35 for a simple version. So to start with, most people when they build their outposts will put bolt shots on this wall here or this wall here to catch people as they escape. And people tend to run to the left or the right when they get out of the doors, or they'll tend to jump to avoid getting hit by ones coming from inside the base door. So what I actually do is take bull traps and place them on these surfaces here, which are angled up to catch people as they run out. They'll jump and they'll get hit by the bolt as they leave the base, meaning that they get caught by it actually as they exit, and you can't actually see it when you're approaching it from the inside of the base. One of the powerful things with this as well is because of the way that the bolts fall, they'll actually drop onto people as they zip line away, meaning that you can actually catch people even if they've got just outside of the full range when they jump from the base, making it really effective. And of course, you want it to be a second wave trap so that you can catch people as they exit really good and my god does it feel dirty okay so the next one we're looking at is the dual brute slam this is one that i came across by absolute accident i was experimenting my first base ran through and found that a load of deaths were found at this exact point um, and it was the brutes that actually did the work so how this is done is it's where a corridor opens up into a wider room you want to leave a little bit of a space above the door where we're going to create the actual trap portion of this and you want a space either side of the door to include the brutes or warmongers in this case what we're going to do here is we're going to add in a grappler above the door and two warmongers but you may also want to use a hollow cube to block off the um the trap so it becomes less visible so in this case, we're going to grab the grappler and place it on the roof directly above the entrance. And we're going to place an impaler on the side wall there at the back of the door so you can't be seen as you go in, just to add a little bit more depth to it. We're then going to grab two warmongers and place them either side of the door. The idea being is that as you come in to the door, you won't see the warmongers or you'll catch them in their vision right as you enter, and they will take your attention away from the trap that is above you. The grappler will then grab you 
pull you up so the two warmongers can attack you from either side. It works really well and I've caught so many people out with it. So more than a specific trap here, I want to talk about how to use bombs to stop people from speedrunning your outpost. And to do this, I'm going to show you how to make a more widespread bomb trap. And these are great for long corridors like this one here, where people are going to be running and trying to get through your base as fast as possible. The first thing that you want to do is get two ramps and place them in your hallway going up and down. So into this kind of triangular pyramid type shape, as you can see right here. This forces someone to run up it and down and then carry on down the hallway. This is going to be used to distribute the bombs so that they actually chase the raider down the hallway or separate behind them so they can't backtrack, meaning it's very hard to get out of that hallway without getting hit by those bombs. I'm going to raise the ceiling up here as well because I like to recess my bomb traps. And the way that I do my recesses is I lead it up so that it's directly above the upside of the ramp. And then at that point, I add my slanted ceiling so that it throws the bombs over the edge of the ramp. And you can have one go in the opposite way as well if you want to throw them backwards to stop any retreat. This actually makes the only safe part of this trap the ramp itself because they won't be at the top of the ramp, they'll be down further. But it's really good for distributing it into the hallway to stop speedrunners. And you can get really crafty with it by placing traps at the end or using hollow cubes to kind of hide parts of this trap or obscure visibility going into it. You want to make sure, however, that there's a clear path between the radar and the bomb trap so that it does automatically detonate. And I personally like to leave it on the back facing wall and sometimes leave the front facing wall empty just to have a bit more of a clear um, block. Okay, so this last trap is one of my favorite little gotchas. It's used to kind of trap corners as you're going into another large room through a doorway. And I've set this up as a very, very simple setup with a trap area to the right hand side as you go in. And then the actual path is going to be going off along this wall here into another room where I'm standing currently. And I'm gonna actually trap the opposite side to catch people as they come in and trigger the trap around here. So to start with, I'm going to be placing a grappler on the right hand wall to pull people in as they go into the next room and it'll catch them in the doorway. You can also place it to the side here if you want to catch them as they come into the room, but in the middle has a little bit more of a wide area, but you can grab them anywhere in this main room once it's triggered. You then need to put some kind of delay trap to stop them from running into the next room directly. So maybe something like a piston or just something in the room that they can see as soon as they turn the corner to make them think twice. Maybe a bolt trap in the room facing the doorway. Just something to keep players on their toes. You just want to slow them down a little bit as they approach the door. You then want to grab some lava cubes to obscure the grappler on both sides. And this works really well if you're using the opaque mod to make them um, harder to see. The player will then run and again get caught by the grappler and have to make their decision to turn around and deal with that before they deal with whatever's in the room. What I then do is in a recess in the ceiling that is facing down onto the trap is place a bomb dispenser. What this will do is it will trigger as the player gets pulled to the grappler, but then they have to run through the bombs to get away from the grapple. They also bounce off the back wall, meaning they bounce towards the doorway should they get triggered slightly earlier for some reason. This will cause the player to then get caught as they dodge the sides of the doors and get pulled back into the trap through the lava cubes. And this can be done as well if they try and dodge going into the room, they'll get grabbed and pulled in to the lava cubes, which is a really good way of kind of catching people out if they don't spot the grappler coming around the corner. And you could use maybe a hollow cube to obscure it further if you wanted to. You can also do this on slightly shorter rooms if you wanted to give people less reaction time. So let's just take this room apart and let's make it a little bit less reactive. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking away the lava cubes on either side and take away the back wall. And then I'm then going to bring the wall forward a single square just to give it a slightly bit less reaction time. And then I'm going to reset the trap on this wall. This again is going to do very much the same kind of thing, but you will really benefit from the opaque mod here. 
You may want to put a lava trap on that far side as well, just to mean that they can only dodge to the left of that doorway from anything that's coming in. Again, if they do dodge to the left, however, they will get caught by the grappler and pulled through the lava cube. So it does give a really good little way of catching people out by just grabbing them and pulling them through the cube. So I said have a bit of a quick tip just around how you can make your second wave more effective. Um, I'm just putting this over some footage of me and my um, co-op partner running through a really cool base that we found as we were playing around the other day. I think this was actually on launch day, which was quite uh, quite fun. Um, a really interesting base that must have been put together by someone in the beta. Um, so, but I want to talk a little bit about the gem mat rooms. So as you can see here in this clip, we're just picking up the gem mat. And as we do, all these different tra traps appear and you can see they have got a yellow flashing light on them for a few seconds. And that's because they don't actually fire straight away. They take a few seconds to power up. What I've seen a lot of people doing is trapping the gen mat itself, but not realizing that by the time those traps are ready to fire, you're going to be well away from those traps. So just want to consider that you may not want to trap your actual gen mat room. You may want to look at having your second wave a little bit further back into your base just to avoid wasting any capacity. And that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And I'll be back soon with some more Meet Your Maker content. And as mentioned, this is my first video. So please drop a like, subscribe, all that jazz to help me get started on this Meet Your Maker channel. Thank you all. Have a good day. And I'll see you soon.